This is Secret of the Slaver Stockade on Normal. search for the slave lords has led to a large fortress complex deep in the wilderness. The clatter and clang of armor can be heard from down the hallway. The clamor of creatures preparing for battle can be heard from the next room. The courtyard is used as a mustering point where the slavers meet before going out on raids. Hobgoblins can be heard rushing to take positions on the platforms above. The parade grounds stand as the last staging grounds before troops enter the stockade proper. The parade grounds give way to a small inner courtyard with a working fountain in good repair. That seemed pretty chintzy. The inner keep houses the remainder of the troops and serves to protect the entrance to the dungeon below. Pulling the lever unlocks a door nearby. This bear is stuffed and mounted on a track. A trick 
used to frighten and confuse intruders. If you pull the lever, there's a soft pop, and an enchanted crystal lights up. Roar. 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 The second lever is pulled. A rush of air can be felt as the doors down the hallway open. used to make trespassers believe there are more defenders than there really are. The lever is pulled and a crystal lights up nearby. The sound of a gate grinding open can be heard in the distance. Then come frenzied shouts that grow closer with every second. Slave cages line the walls of this large complex. A control cage can be seen on the far end of the room. The moment you enter, slaves plead to be released from captivity. Control cell door drops from the jailer's pocket. Yeah, that's better. Inside the cage are several levers. It seems likely that they control the doors to the slave cells. The door barring your exit swings open as the, le the third lever is pulled, and the remaining slaves flee the fort. I'm interested to see how some of that works out a little bit because it's uh, pretty hard to disable the traps when you get mobbed, even more so on higher difficulties. These are the officers' quarters for the orcs who guard this area. A lever with a limited gem is mounted on the back wall. decorated room houses a large and powerful odor. There is a to the right side of the door. A 
I'm sure this is going to be a really tough click, room on Elise. And two doors swing open. The sound of chatter can be heard from deeper within the fortress. This large dining hall serves as a gathering place for the fort's troops. Ikar, the commander of the fort, stands ready to make a final stand. As Ikar falls, the door opens to reveal a passageway leading deeper into the fortress. Even though I haven't really gotten any really great loot from these chests, I suspect they'll get better on normal or on hard and elite. I mean, they'll probably be level 9 stuff on hard and level 10 stuff on elite, which is perfect. So I feel pretty encouraged with all these chests in here. We're going to probably see some nice random loot items. A glance at the room and, uh, reveals a passageway leading down course, to the dungeon below. The right mix of random loot items, no I doubt, Marquesa and the rest here. of her This hallway right now, serves as the entrance to the fortress's quite a dungeon. Bit. Marquesa must be somewhere inside. Definitely an elite. I'm going to have to do a better job with these traps. An invisible force pulls the metallic objects you're wearing upwards towards the ceiling. Removing large metal objects might spare you. The force pulling you towards the ceiling suddenly stops. The room is filled with spider webs. The soft sound of weeping can be heard from the nearby room. Grim-looking devices are scattered throughout this tour. A burst of moist air enfolds you as the door opens. This hallway connects with a natural cavern that leads deeper into the subterranean complex. to reveal a large chasm. The glint of two different gems can be seen down on the cavern floor.
With the door unsealed, you may continue into the caverns below. Rumbling sound can be heard from the corridor above. A soft buzzing sound can be heard as you approach the door. Bees swarm near their hives. Surely this room is for making honey. You should be safe, unless... Fading in here. This is one of the tougher mechanics in this quest and uh, higher difficulties. It's pretty tough. The door rolls open, revealing a small settlement built into the very walls of the cave. Goblins have built three defensive positions inside this massive cavern. You need to destroy these strong points before you can continue. The last of the outpost's defenders falls. The hobgoblins outside the barracks have been defeated. cavern once again gives way to a masonry hallway. Female elf matching Marquesa's description leading through a portal. The creatures spring forward to protect her escape. Portal barring your path fades when you pull this lever. A gaunt creature stands at the end of the hallway, looking at you nervously. Blackthorn springs back and makes ready for battle. You 
search Blackthorn's body and find a key to a nearby door. Scuffling guards and agitated prisoners comes from the room to your right. Open the last door. Slaves emerge from their cells and escape. Before you stands Juliet, Marquess's assistant. Juliet curses you as she falls to the ground. Marquesa awaits your arrival inside this well-appointed room. Marquesa's double is dead, no longer enthralled to the madwoman who remade her in her own image. Now, to find the real Marquesa. Before you stands a powerful minotaur, ready to defend Marquess to its dying breath. The Slave Lord stands before you. Some kind of object is encased in a magical field behind her. Marquesa is dead. That's going to be a really hard routed. fight on Elite. For now melee. to search for clues that might lead to the Slave Lord's primary stronghold. Marked on the map is a cave that leads to the Slaver's City. 
Surely this must be the slave lord's main base. That's the secret of the slaver stockade on normal. 